Well, hey, this is Rhonda Simmons, the founder and CEO of the Simmons Empowerment Foundation. And I am so excited to welcome you to this episode of Empowered Heart to Heart. Uh, I am, I'm just thrilled because I have met some of the best people on this podcast and I've interviewed some of the best people and today is no exception. I'm so excited um, because you're going to meet someone who is doing a great work in her area. You know, that's the thing. There is so much to be done in the world today. So many people need help until there, there is no competition. There, there's no you know, well, these are my clients, those are your clients. And, you know, there, there's there's none of that because the need is great. And so I appreciate those who have responded to the call, uh, the clarion call to help those in need, because many times we have exactly uh, what people need and, and we have the skill set and the resources and the ability to help those who uh, need some extra support. So I encourage you, uh, if you're listening to this on our podcast, make sure you bookmark the podcast um, so that you can come back often and listen to our episodes on Empowered Heart to Heart. We are on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and uh, also on our website, which is www.tsefi.org. Um, and so make sure if you're watching this on YouTube that you are liking, commenting, and sharing this video and subscribing so you'll know whenever um, I post a new episode. So glad that you're here. And I would like very much to introduce to you my special guest, uh, Miss Kelly McLean. She is the founder and CEO. Let's see. My screen is a little bit dark. Hold on. Let's try this again. Okay, there we are. All righty. We'd like to introduce to you Ms. Kelly McLean, who is the founder of the Kelly McLean Achievement Center. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, glad to have you with us. I'm so excited that you were able to take time out of your busy schedule to just chat with us and let us know what's going on in your part of the world. Um, I'd love for you to share uh, with me and the audience more about yourself and, the, and your organization. Fabulous. So I worked in college admissions for nine years. Eight of those nine years, I coached varsity girls high school soccer. And between working with high school students interested in the college or my own soccer players, I just saw a huge breakdown in the information they were receiving. And when my own daughter started high school, I realized they're getting information with 320 of their classmates all in the auditorium and nothing is specific to them. So I started helping my soccer players. Their parents started referring me to other people. And suddenly the company was born out of necessity because people were asking for more and more help. And so we cover a broad range of things, everything from subject specific tutoring and test prep uh, to things colleges are really interested in, grades and test scores. But we also help with an area that I think is so needed and yet so underserved in career exploration. Four years in math, English, science, and history, and they are not exposed to the amazing opportunities that are out there. And when they head off to college and there's 600 majors to choose from, it can be overwhelming. It can feel stressful to try to decide. And so we love helping students kind of navigate that process in advance when they can take their time and really make a good, well thought out decision. That is exciting. That is really exciting. I love the fact that you um, help unpack the whole college experience for students and for their families. That's that's super important because a lot of times as parents, you know, they just feel like, okay, if I can get my child off to college, we're good. And, you know, they, they feel a sense of accomplishment and they should. Um, sure. But a lot of times, like you said, they don't know the right questions to ask. They don't know the right path to take. And so I love the way you have broken down the process for them so that they can make informed decisions and so that students can um, 
choose career paths that and majors um, that align with their passions. Um, and so one of the things uh, I did want to ask you about about doing that is how can um, you help children discover their passion? What What is the path that you take with them and still set them up for success in the current economy? Yeah, so the diversity in the current economy of your options is so extensive. Back when I went to college, I mean, maybe a dozen majors, everybody was business, engineering, nursing, teaching type of thing. And today it is so vast. So we really work on interest, helping students really define what their interests are or what sounds interesting to them. Because I think the people that are the happiest in their careers are the people who are still interested in their careers, who feel like there's a purpose and so forth. So we have a whole process that we go through with students. We're, we're not worried about, you know, too often students are told, oh, you're good in math, go into engineering. You're good in science, go into nursing or become a doctor. And I don't think you have to follow necessarily what you're good at. If you're interested enough, you'll become good at it. I'm sure, you know, no one told you to host a radio show or a podcast when you were in high school and you became good at it because you're really interested in serving people and getting the message out there. So we really look for like what lights them up, what their interest is. And then from there, introduce how can you use that to monetize it? There's that Japanese saying, Ikigai, where, you know, find what you love, what serves other people, what you can make money at. And then what you are good at. And when you put that all together, that's really your purpose. Absolutely. That is fantastic. Um, so what are some of the up and coming careers that um, people should know about that's happening today? Well, content creator is something that a lot of parents are horrified when that comes up in conversation. Um, because they're picturing, you know, Instagram influencers and it's completely a different world. You know, every company markets and marketing today is more about content creation rather than running stale ads. And so if someone's a good writer or loves to almost gamify it as, you know, what can I put out that's going to get a lot of attention? Um, they, that might be something that they take a look at. One of the things we do is we allow students, we set up shadows for them because I think talking to someone who's actually doing it and better understanding it makes a huge difference. And parents come around when they see, you know, that the child can intelligently talk about what that means, that they're not sitting at home in their jammies all day on Instagram, like they're really doing something. Um, so then they get on board and say, oh, okay, that's that's interesting. A lot of tech fields. Um, I, I interviewed somebody recently who does a lot of work in the solar industry. And I have a lot of students that come in and they say they wanna do something environmental, but they don't want to be an environmental scientist. They don't want to be out in the field collecting soil samples. They don't want to um, be an a environmental attorney. So are there other options? And there are. So I talked with somebody about solar technology and great job kind of combining the engineering side of it to some degree, like the intellect, you know, what does this really do? And the sales side of it to get it out into the public. So. Wow, that that's really exciting. My my brain is going in a thousand directions right now, and I'm I'm just thinking about the wonderful work that you're doing, and how it's so needed. You know, a lot of times our young people they they have dreams and goals, <clears throat> excuse me, but they have no direction. Mm -hmm. They don't know the details. They don't know um, how do I make it happen. And so it's great that there are organizations like yours to help them uh, get that direction and to connect them with people who are actually living their dreams. And so that that's really cool. Um, what if a student is um, struggling with their major and they want to switch majors or they want to transfer? How do you help that student? Well, we kind of walk through that process again. Why do they want to change majors? What's the stumbling block? And again, I think that's why starting the whole process early, figuring out what your interests are, it's so much easier to handle an obstacle that comes up, a bad professor, a really tough class, if the prize at the end is worthwhile. If you kind of picked a prize because out of the 12 things you knew about, this was 
the best of the 12, but it's not really resonating, it's a lot harder to get through those obstacles. And so those challenges mean change direction. And that's okay because you do want to get on the right path before you spend 40 years in the workforce because 40 years is a long time. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So how do you find your clients? How do people know about you? So we have a very active Facebook group. Um, we've got 4,000 or so members in there and it, you know, people cycle out once their kids get into college and new people come in all the time. Um, but we do a lot of informational posting on there so that parents who have the time and the patience to do this themselves with their child can. But for a lot of people, they're like, I work full time. I don't have time to investigate careers. I don't have time. And, you know, let's face it. Teenagers aren't always the easiest to work with when you are the parent. I had three of my own and trust me, um, it's funny how they listen to someone else, but not you. Well, in this case, I'm the someone else. I'm yeah. the voice of reason who they go home and tell their parent, oh, she said this. Well, wait, yeah. I've been saying that. No, it's different. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, but that's how we get our clients basically is they find us through social media or referrals. Referrals are a big part of it. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we would be remiss, Kelly, if we did not talk about uh, the elephant in the room when it comes to college, and that is how to pay for it. Yes, you are so spot on. It is the elephant in the room. So yes. I, I will try to be very cognizant of my time and not babble, but a couple things I'm going to say. First of all, there are a lot of careers today that don't need college. They do need additional education, but it doesn't need to be a traditional four-year brick and mortar go away to school. If your child really has a desire for that experience and there's a way to do it, yes, it's a great opportunity, but not everyone needs that. Additional education in different forms. A lot of people don't know what that looks like, though. And I'll give you an example. Um, linemen in our area make $42 an hour. Linemen go up on poles and, you know, fix lines. So obviously the worst part of that job is you're working in storms, but you're getting paid time and a half when you're called in on a storm. So $63 an hour. I don't know. Is that worth it? You know, only you can decide. But it's, um, I believe it's a 12 week training program right out of high school that you can get involved in. So it's additional education, but it's not at the expense of a traditional college. Some colleges are very, very, very generous. They're generous when a high achieving student above their middle average of their students wants to attend there and they'll incentivize them with a lot of scholarship money. So if you're a high achieving student looking at a school where their average GPA is much lower than yours can lead to a lot of money. It doesn't mean the school won't get you to the same place. You do not need to attend an Ivy League school to come out and make the same type of money that they're making. Um, so that's obviously a consideration. Community college can be too, but I think parameters need to be placed on it because matriculation from community college to a four-year college, while often the intention, a lot of times students find themselves getting a job, having some cash in their pocket, renting an apartment, buying a car, now they have some debt, and they've got obligations where they can't just go off to college, go and fulfill that four-year dream. And so, you know, they have to have that prize at the end in sight so that they really kind of stick with their goals and don't let the shiny object of the moment entice them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how would families reduce their college expenses? I mean, I, I understand I, I'm working on my doctorate myself. And, and so I, I understand the whole cost, uh, you know, of going to college. There are some things that are unavoidable that you have to pay for, but how can we reduce college expenses in other areas? So the better your grades, the better the opportunities for scholarships. It's that simple. Also, there are a lot of scholarships people don't even know exist to take advantage of. So scholarship searches online. Um, my, I'm not affiliated in any way with this, but my favorite tool is myscholly.com. Um, you create a profile. They sort based on your profile so that you're getting things that are relevant to you. 
Um, so I really like that. But that that scholarship process turns into a job. I mean, you're writing essays, you're doing videos, you're doing, you're submitting things. So if you can spend that same amount of time on grades to make sure that you have the best grades possible, that's really where money comes in. Because when a college gives you money, it's there for all four years versus when you get a one-time scholarship, you've got to continue to apply for those additional years. Wow. Wow. I didn't realize that part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good to know. That's very good to know. Wow. Yes. Um, and so other than grades, is there anything else that a student can do to make themselves stand out to a, to a school? Sure. There's also leadership, extracurriculars. Um, one thing I really want to dispel Unless by the time you're a sophomore in high school, mm -hmm. you have been told that you are a division one football or basketball player. An athletic scholarship is not giving you the type of money you need to pay for college. Athletic scholarships for any other sport or any other division are very, very, very limited. And I see too many people thinking that they're great baseball player. They're great you know, tennis player is going to get a full ride. And that's just not reality. Division one football and basketball um, are fully funded. So they are full tuition, full ride scholarships. But those are the sports that also get TV income. And so that's why those other sports, if your sport is not nationally televised all the time on the college circuit, the likelihood of you getting a full ride for it is very, very, very slim. Well, that is good to know because I think sometimes uh, our athletes that are still in high school have a misconception, a gross misconception, you know, mm -hmm. and they tend, and I've been an educator. Um, and so uh, the, what I've seen is that they focus all their energies on um, the sport and not on the grades. And then I'll, I'll just say it, they expect as teachers to give them a passing grade that they have not earned. Mm -hmm. And uh, frankly, I'm not the one. <laughs> yeah. you know, if you if you want a passing grade in my class, you're going to earn it. And uh, that's just, I mean, that's just how it goes. And so um, it's sad because they don't think about, okay, what if I blow out my knee? Then what? You know, what if, right. you know, some other injury happens and you don't want these things to happen to them. But they what I found with young people is they don't appreciate the power of a backup plan. You know, yes. they, they, they don't they, they don't appreciate that. And so it's organizations like yours and mine that help them realize this is real life. You, you need a backup plan. We need mm -hmm. to deal with reality. And, uh, and so that's why I appreciate what you do. Um, and so this is exciting news. Um, so when you were in the, the college field, college admissions field, um, did you see this day coming that you'd be on this end of it? I didn't, to be honest with you. I, I really didn't. Um, college admissions kind of took a turn when I was in it. Um, I had already started kind of helping, like I said, soccer players and other families. But all of a sudden, I was noticing more and more that college admissions had become nothing but a sales job and quotas. And I didn't like that. I stood at a college fair one time and the table next to mine, um, another college, a gentleman uh, spoke to a young girl and her mother. And I overheard the conversation and the mom was expressing concern because the daughter's GPA was lower than that college's typical average. And the gentleman, oh, no, apply, definitely apply. Here's my card. Make sure that you apply. We, we take a look at the whole picture and really gave her the, you know, option like this could be something. And once they had walked away, I looked at him. I said, there is no way you're admitting that girl. He goes, oh, I know that. I go, why did you encourage her? Like her mom's walking by saying, oh, look, he gave you his card. Like you're getting in. And he said, well, because we're told to get our admissions up so that our acceptance rate goes down, it makes us more valuable. Wow. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I was just like, wow. in that moment, I was like, this 
I, I don't want to be part of this. And, you know, in like, let's face it, colleges like to tell like, oh, we're all that we have a 3% acceptance rate, 11% acceptance rate, and so forth. They feel like that adds value. And I see that, I mean, they've done a great job of brainwashing the society for that. Because I see students who, in fact, right before our call, I had a text from a mom, a girl got into a very, very, very selective school off of a wait list. And she had been accepted to other really great schools they're beneath her. She need she didn't she didn't put in all this hard work, earn all these A's to go to a school that other people could go to. She wanted to go to a school that only took the really 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 high achieving students. Wow. And I'm like, okay, so co- like these kids are just so misinformed. Like college is what you make of it. The more you get involved, especially today, employers want to see kids who can collaborate. Because let me tell you, COVID did no favors in creating people who could collaborate, collaborate, communicate, and so forth. So employers are looking like, that's great. You got good grades. Like that's kind of a given. But what else did you do? What clubs did you belong to? What groups did you get involved with? What leadership roles? They want to know you can do those things so that you actually can fit into the workplace. Yes, yes, and yes, yes. Oh my goodness, I I would ask you to say all that again, but I I, I don't want to get on your nerves. <laughs> you have just preached to the choir. Let me tell you, mm-hmm. it is so important, and that is that is a concept, especially when you're dealing with younger parents who may not have a full um, appreciation for the big picture. Right. You know. Um, when when these young people go for interviews, they need to understand every single person that company interviewed was qualified for that position. They everybody equally qualified, just you know, on a blanket basic level. But they're looking for those skills, those critical skills that you just mentioned that um, may not be reflected in their resume if they if they knew how to write one, but. <laughs> You know, and so it is so important that they have those critical life skills, collaboration, communication. Um, How are you able to um, uh, interact with people and and just how how do you do all of that? And and that's what the interview is really about. Mm -hmm. You know, we can all look good on paper. I mean, we can say what we want to say on paper, but it's how you interact with people. And and. That just speaks to my heart, Kelly, because I'm a people person. No matter what strategies, research-based strategies, methodologies, all these other big words we want to use, when it's all said and done at the end of the day, it's people. It's Mm -hmm. always been people. How do you treat people? How do you interact with them? How do you talk to them? Are, Are you persuasive enough? You know, the whole art of sales is being able to communicate so well that your offer is irresistible. Do you have that skill? You know, <laughs> it, it's, just, it's so important. And that just speaks so that just speaks volumes uh, to me because it's it's a skill that I, I don't see a lot of of our um, freshman uh, students having, you know, it, it, I, I don't know. And I think, like you said, COVID did us no favors. It left left us all isolated, um, and so and now we're dealing with a generation that knows how to communicate via social media, yes. text messaging, and oh my goodness, as an English teacher, Kelly, I can tell you, <laughs> the essays that I've read, I hate to even call them essays because they were glorified text messages, you know. <laughs> I understand. And, yes, mm-hmm. yes. And so I appreciate the work that you're doing. It, it's it's very powerful. How long have you uh, had the Achievement Center? Twelve. It'll be twelve years coming up shortly. Oh my goodness, that yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. That is wonderful. Thanks. And um, and so it's your Achievement Center. Um, is the work that you do in person or virtual or hybrid? We do both. So we have clients across the country. 
and obviously we typically work on Zoom. And then we have students local to our area and they come into our office. I have um, three success coaches. I have a couple of assistants. I have a couple of tutors. So we have a wide variety to be able to meet students' needs and we're open seven days a week. So we, you know, talk about those student athletes. The only day they have available is Sundays. That's the only day for high school. They're not doing game film, workouts, and so forth. So we make sure that we're accessible. Wow. That is great. That is great. You know, this is good information, even for those young people who want to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You know, do, do they have the tenacity to uh, do whatever it takes to make the business work? You know, and because that's what I'm hearing uh, from you about your organization. You have built that tenacity. You have built a team who's willing to work seven days a week. You know, you that means you can't just, you're not just looking for bodies, you know, right. <laughs> to right. fill a position. And so uh, that that is exciting work that you're doing. Um, now, is there a website that yes. um, I can share <laughs> with people? Because um, I am going to, while you give me the website, I'm going to put it up on the screen for those who will be watching on our YouTube channel. Fabulous. Uh, it's Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y hyphen M-A-C.com. Oh, that's cool. Okay. And let's see if I got this right. And is that good? Yep. Perfect. All righty. So if you want to reach out to the Kelly McLean Achievement Center, that is the website you go to www.kelly-mac.com. If you're listening to our podcast, um, this website will also be in the description of our podcast. You need to, to do what you need to do to help your teenagers. Um, as parents, we know what's best for our kids. I know you love them. I know they said that they know what's best for themselves and they have the power to choose. We understand all that. But as parents, um, bless your heart, <laughs> we're going to do what's right for our kids. And so uh, the Kelly McLean Achievement Center is what's right. Um, choose um, to help your children make those decisions. And also, um, one last thing about college, um, a lot of times, and, and I used to work for a um, student loan servicer mm -hmm. uh, before becoming a teacher. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah, I heard it. I heard it. And let me tell you, that was such an eye opener, Kelly, um, to see the other end. And that's when I first realized, even before I became a teacher or started my own nonprofit, that's when I realized parents do not know, on average, the questions to ask. For example, they think those Parent PLUS loans belong to their students. Mm -mm, that is their loan. They are legally responsible for it. Um, now, whatever agreement they have in the family is wonderful. However, by law, what's on that paper? The parents signed the promissory note. And so um, how can uh, families negotiate that financial aid offer? So there's actually a lot of ways. Um, one thing I highly discourage, well, two things, actually. Number one, parents don't take Parent PLUS loans. Do not do it. If you want to co-sign for your child on a loan that they are taking and responsible for, that's fine. If you think for one minute that your child is going to pay their own student loans, which they get automatically, and then pay the one that you signed for, they're going to be like, Mom, I can't do that this month. Mom, I got this going on. Mom, I'm moving out. Mom, I got to buy furniture. And you are going to suck it up and you're going to be responsible. I've seen parents who could not downsize because they couldn't get a new mortgage because of the amount of their Parent PLUS loans. Like that's a terrible position. They couldn't retire and so forth. But anyways, how do you negotiate? Negotiate from a place of need, not a place of emotion. Oh, my kid really wants to go there. We can't afford it. No. I, what medical bills weren't listed on that FAFSA? Who else are you taking care of not listed on that FAFSA? What other expenses that don't reflect or it change in income? in comparison to what you reported on that FAFSA. Those are the tools to really negotiate. 
Um, once you establish a relationship, negotiating with them, then you can negotiate based a little bit more on emotion. Because trust me, I did that. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> that is the word for the day, Kelly, is yes. You have really given us so much food for thought um, and so many tools that, that we may not have thought about. Um, that is why it's important that parents realize they're not in this alone. Whoever came up with that saying, it takes a village. 100%. Uh, oh my goodness, spot on, spot mm -hmm. on. Because no one person knows everything. And that is why we've got to make those connections with people who can help us get where we're trying to go and do what we're trying to do. And so I appreciate you and the uh, Kelly McLean Achievement Center. I think you're doing a great work and I, I'm excited for you. Um, are there any final thoughts you want to share with our audience that may help them in their journey to getting their child through college? Absolutely. So we do a free consultation. It's a 30 minute consultation. If you go to the website, contact the phone number on there, we'll send you a link to schedule that. But obviously you can get some questions answered, find out more information and um, see if, if you need additional help from us or if we can answer your questions to get you on the right path. Wonderful. Wonderful. I love your um, openness and trying to help parents make the right decisions um, because that's what it's all about, trying to make the best decisions. And you can only do that when you have enough information to make those informed decisions. Well, uh, Kelly, I appreciate your time. If you will just hang out just for a minute, I'm, I'm just going to give some closing uh, comments to our audience and, uh, and I'll be right back with you, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, this was one of the best, and I know I say it all the time, but this was one of the best interviews because you got information that you need. Um, you know, there, there's a verse that says that people perish for lack of knowledge. I don't want to be destroyed because of my own ignorance and things that I should know but don't know. And that is why there are people like Kelly McLean and her Achievement Center that are already established in place to help you get to the next level. I'm all about growth. I'm all about change. I'm all about improving yourself, uh, but we need to know how to do it. And so get with Kelly um, and her Achievement Center so that you can get your questions answered about how to get your teenagers through college. It's important. Um, also, uh, I love what they're doing. We have similar missions. In fact, uh, the Simmons Empowerment Foundation, uh, we have our coaching practice where we also work with um, students ages 15 to 21 who are at risk for high school dropout, and we help to improve their college and career readiness. And so it's a good way to um, partner with these organizations to help you help your teenager. Trust me, they need help. I know they're living by, what, what's that uh, acronym, YOLO? You only live once? Uh, well, we want to help them live after the once, you know? <laughs> there is life after today, and we want them to be as successful as possible. Because truth be told, we want our children to have even better lives than we may have had. We want them to make better choices than we did. We want things to be better and happier for them and for them to have successful careers. And so reach out to the Kelly McLean Achievement Center. Uh, the website is on the screen. It'll be in the description of the podcast. Reach out to them and see what resources they can connect you with to help your teenagers succeed. Until the next time, be blessed, be encouraged, but most of all, be empowered. And I'll see you next time.